It's been one year since we last spent time with three moms who are trying to balance their schedule, their kids' schedule, and the stresses of being a modern day mom. The holiday season is in full swing for these ladies as surprise after surprise creates new challenges and obstacles to overcome leading up to Christmas Day. Does Bad Moms 2 actually deliver on the merriment and ho ho hoing we'd expect from a sequel in this franchise? Or is this film going to get coal in its stockings? Let's dive in and take a look in this review. The story actually over delivers on Christmas. And because of that, I was actually surprised that they released it as early as they did and not actually maybe like the weekend after Thanksgiving or the very first week in December when there's really not that much competition at all as far as new box office is concerned. And had the release date been pushed back to something closer to the December mark, I think maybe this film would have gotten a little bit better reception because there is so much Christmas and holiday cheer in this movie from beginning to end, it just makes more sense to me if they would have dropped it like say this coming weekend. However, a delayed release date won't do much for a drab, predictable, and overly decadent Christmas story that goes off the rails. In fact, some of the moments where the ladies become completely unhinged were one of my biggest complaints in this film. The entire scene at the mall where the women are going crazy and they're just trying to burn off as much stress as they can from being a modern day mom almost felt out of place from the rest of the movie and almost like it didn't even belong. So in the first film, they had that grocery store scene and everything like that. And I think they're just trying to carry that theme through to this movie. However, in the first movie, it actually kind of worked. And in this one, it just feels like it was shoved in and they just wanted that for continuity's sake. That's not to say though, that all the wild, crazy zaniness felt out of place. The scene where the girls are at the bar and it's the Santa stripper dance off where they're just watching dudes dressed in Santa costumes dance provocatively. That scene actually worked in this movie, surprisingly, because it felt like that's something those characters would naturally do because of how the story evolved. But in all, the writing in this film really wasn't that great. Like I said, it is predictable. The jokes were very predictable. You could sense the joke coming. You knew what the setup was gonna be. You knew what the punchline and the payoff would be. I personally didn't have that many laughs throughout this film. I actually suffered a little bit of eye fatigue because of how many times I rolled my eyes at the predictability of the story. Also, the majority of characters felt like caricatures. So if the three leading ladies all represent a specific personality type, their mothers actually over over amplify and over exaggerate those personality types. So in all, this film felt like a 50-50 split between what characters would do and what the ideas of characters would do. And again, that's split between the three girls and their three moms, which surprisingly lent itself to another split of enjoyable on-screen interactions and terrible on-screen chemistry. A Bad Mom's Christmas is playing at your local movie theater right now. And if you're a female who likes to drink and enjoys a girl's night out, then this might be a film that's right up your alley. You may wanna bust out your cell phone and just hop into that group chat that you have with your girlfriends and just plan an evening where you're gonna go out, grab some dinner and drinks, check this film out as just a girl's night out, and then go get some more drinks afterwards. Because I think some of the jokes and some of the story might land a little bit better for the ladies than the men. And in this film, I was literally the only man in my theater. I was surrounded by a theater full of women who laughed a lot more than I did. And then towards the end, when we actually go into discussions about what it means to be a mom and the sacrifices mothers make, it did actually get an emotional response from some of the ladies that were sitting on either side of me. So because of that reason, this film is gonna get at least one high five from this guy. Because while the jokes didn't necessarily land, I could tell by the females' reactions sitting on either side of me that the writers knew who their target demographic was and they wrote well for the people that they were trying to get into the theater, which you have to respect. A Bad Mom's Christmas is playing at your local movie theater right now. Gentlemen, you have been warned. Enjoy the movie, ladies. Hi, I'm Jeremy Bernanski, and you've just finished watching a movie review on Bernanski's vlog. Along with the movie reviews and the weekly show, we also do the certified rad segments and the movie news breakdown, which you may want to check out. All right, everybody, we'll see you next Monday for a brand new episode of Bernanski's vlog, Monday morning, 10 a.m. PST. See you there. Have a great week.